Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here I'll show you guys how to do a strong induction proof. Have a look. Let r be a real number, and if we have r plus 1 over r being an integer, then we are going to show that r to the nth power plus 1 over r to the nth power also has to be an integer. For n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on, so on, so on. As we can see, this statement has n. Well, whenever you are proving a statement involves n, you use induction most of the time, right? All right, so this is how the induction will go. You first check the base case. Just plugging this into the n. Most of the time it's true, of course. Otherwise, you're done already because it's false. And then you do what we call the inductive hypothesis, meaning that you assume the statement is true up to k, and then you check if the statement is true or not for the k plus 1 situation, right? So that's pretty much how it will go. And before we start the proof, maybe you are wondering, is it really possible to have r plus 1 over r being an integer? Well, of course, you can just have r is equal to 1, yeah? But if you don't want to have like obvious situations, you can do the following. You can check, right? Just go ahead and put down r plus 1 over r. Pick your favorite integer. Let's say it's 3. Just go ahead and solve this quadratic after you multiply everybody by 2, you have, I mean, after you multiply everybody by r. You have r squared plus 1 is equal to 3r. Go ahead and solve it. The r is not rational though, but you know that will be the r that will make this work. And then you take the r, you have two choices, you take whatever r you want. Square that and then plus 1 over r squared, you will end up with the integer. This right here is very similar to the Fibonacci sequence formula, alright? However, as I told you guys, if you do this, or it's not rational, I actually do not know if it's possible to have rational r so that you have r plus 1 over r being an integer. Of course, ignore the obvious case 1 and negative 1. So, if you know, let me just put on r as a over b, and then 1 over r, which is going to be b over a. Is this possible to get integer if you can find out r and again do not have a and b equal to each other or like um then not to be negative one if you know if it's possible or not let me know right i would really appreciate that <laughs> all right now let's go ahead and do our uh inductive proof the first thing is that you write down proof pf all right base case the most wonderful thing in the world because it's the easiest base case when n is equal to one you put one in here and here so you are looking at r to the first power plus 1 over r to the first power. This right here. Is this already? So of course this is true because it was given to be true. They told you this is the nicest case, right? And now, if you think this is too obvious, you can just go ahead and check when n is equal to 2. That's okay. So I will actually do that right here for you guys as well. Let's also check when n is equal to 2. Right? This is when n is equal to 1. When we have n is equal to 2, we have r squared plus 1 over r squared. Well, this is not so easy to do anymore. And the only thing that we can do is make a connection between this and that. And how can we do that though? Have a look. First of all, we have the r plus 1 over r, which is very good. But of course, this is not the same as that. I need to get to r squared, so maybe I will just have to multiply by r, okay? Okay, so if I do that, this is going to be r squared, this is going to be plus 1, alright? But I need to end up with a 1 over r squared, so maybe I'm just going to minus 1 over r, for example. Because if I do that, see? This times this is going to be minus 1, so they cancel out very good. This times that, ah, that's minus 1 over r squared, even though these two cancel out. This and that, they are not the same. Yes, we can keep adding stuff afterwards, so let's say plus 2 over r squared, and then this will be the same as the left-hand side. But the problem is that, even though we do know this right here is an integer by given, but this right here, r minus 1 over r, we don't know. Even worse, 2 over r squared, we do not know. So, unfortunately, this is not the algebra that we are supposed to do for that. So now, let's do another one. Let's try. Again, I need to have r plus 1 over r. Good. How about let me multiply by 
uh, let me just do it with r plus 1 of r as well. Multiply this out, this is going to give us r squared, and then plus 1, plus 1, and then plus 1 over r squared. And as you can see, r squared plus 1 of r squared, they do match, but we have the extra 2, right? So of course, it's okay if we just minus 2 after that. Now this is better because you can see that right here, this is an integer. Likewise, this is an integer. And lastly, this is also an integer. This is, it looks like Dragon Ball Z, but it means an integer, right? Anyway, when you have integer, if you multiply integers and then subtract integers, you still end up with integers, so that's good. Good, right? Now, I'm going to leave it there. So after the base case, what we do next is, is the inductive hypothesis, so IH for that. And I'm going to just write this down. Assume the statement, right? assume the statement is true for n is equal to k. And again, this is why I told you, you assume the statement is true for um, a variable k. And then you want to show that. So want to show WTS. I'm sorry, it's not WTF, want to find. We are doing proof, so it's WTS, want to show. We want to show that the statement is true. We want to show that, namely, we want to show r to the k plus 1 plus 1 over r to the k plus 1. Well, the statement is that we want to show this is an integer. So that's the idea, right? And again, we will have to do things like that earlier to help us break it apart and argue that each part is integer so that we can argue that this also has to be integer. That's the idea. All right. Now, let's go ahead and continue from here. You start from the left-hand side. So I'm going to just write this down. And usually you don't have to write this down. You can just you know, keep this in mind, but you can just write down. We are going to check r to the k plus 1 plus 1 over r to the k plus 1. Well, well, let's see. I want to do things like that. So maybe I will have to just do r plus 1 over r like this. But in that case, hmm, let's go ahead, multiply. Oh, well, let's have a look. Earlier, this is just, it looks like I reduced the power by 1, but this time I have to do really careful. This, this is k plus 1 k plus 1, I have this right here is r to the first, r to the first, so I should have r to the k technically, right? So r to the k plus 1 over r to the k. And this is good because when we are assuming the statement is true for k, that means I can put the k right here and right here and say that r to the k plus 1 over r to the k is an integer. So this is good. And then let's see if this works out nicely or not. Well, the truth is, if you do this times that, it's r to the k plus 1. This times this is plus r to the k minus 1. This times this is plus 1 over r to the k minus 1. This times this is 1 over r to the k plus 1, right? So as you can see, this times this does not equal to the original because we have this extra thing. It's okay though, because all we have to do is go ahead and minus this and that. Uh, it's all. Minus this, minus that, I can put this down as minus both of them inside. What the f Minus inside. So let me just write this down, r to the k minus 1, and then because I minus this minus that, I factor out the minus already. So here it becomes plus 1 over r to the k minus 1, like this. I'm sorry about the, my handwriting on my little board like this. All right, now this is pretty good because you will see that everything is actually in the form of this, right? 
OK, here is the deal. Is this an integer? Yes, because we have the base case to back us up. So we know that this right here is an integer. Perhaps you can just write this down. You know, it's pretty clear. Anyway, is this an integer? Yes, because we have the inductive hypothesis. So I will just go ahead and do this as well. This right here is an integer as well. And perhaps you can say by i h like this. Lastly though, is this also an integer? Well, this is r to the k minus 1 plus 1 over r to the k minus 1. And now here is a small thing. Usually, the induction is just assume the statement is true for n is equal to some number k, right? But that's not complete. In order for us to do this, you have to come back here and instead of saying k, we will just say assume the statement is true for n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on, so on, so on up to k, up to k, right? And this is the complete case, and this is called the strong induction. And some people also call this to be the complete induction because you are assuming everything before k and also k are true. So you see, in this case here though, well, we're assuming it's also true for k minus one, anything before it. If you have a r to the k minus 10 plus one over r to the k minus 10, that will also be true because we are using the strong induction. So as you can see, this one right here is also an integer because we have the strong um, inductive hypothesis. However, there's one thing that is not exactly right when you say that. You have to remember that, well, if k is equal to one, this is technically just one plus one over one. So it's not really because of the inductive hypothesis, it's because of the algebra, because the thing that we did. Right, if k is equal to 1. But anyway, this right here should be clear. So as you can see, because this is integer, that's integer, we subtract another integer. All in all, you can see that this right here is an integer for sure. Checks. Right? So you can just say I'll just thus the statement is true for O n by the strong induction, right? I and D stands for induction because I run out space. So this right here is it. And again, you guys can let me know if it's possible to have a rational R plus one over R to end up with a integer if R is not equal to 1 or negative 1 because if they are uh, 1 or negative 1, it's obvious. So anyway, that's it. Hopefully you guys all like, all like this and let me know if you guys have any questions. Right? That's it. Black pen, red pen, black pen, red pen. a calculus teacher uses black and red. He does math for fun. If he cues get done, using complex numbers doing marathons. And as always, that is